Like Dr. Husney said, my name is Paige Wilbrand. I'm a junior here, and I'm an IMC major. I'm originally from St. Louis. I, I just wanted to thank all the speakers for making their way, and I hope you enjoy your stay here in Oxford, Mississippi. It's my great honor to introduce Mr. Wilkerson. He's the ch Chief Creative Officer of Morris Media Network, and Craig Chapman. I've been shadowing him the past two days and have been getting to know him and what he's been doing producing real food, real kitchens. So I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Wilkerson. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's great to be here. You uh, heard my boss speak at the opening day, uh, Mr. Billy Morris uh, of Morris Media Network. He is uh, uh, the genius behind uh, our network of visitor information and known as the Wear brand. And I'm uh, the chief creative officer, so I'm responsible for all content, basically um, visual and verbal. So uh, at last year's ACT conference, I was uh, sitting here about in that row over there thinking like when, if we're talking about the importance of digital, when are we going to talk about video? Because if we don't have video in digital, we're not really fully utilizing that, uh, that medium. And uh, so ever since then, we've been thinking about video at Morris Media Network, and especially for the wear brand, because if you're a traveler and you want to see a place, what better way to see it than to immerse in it a little bit uh, in live uh, footage as well as the, the written word, which we have no problem doing. So um, in, in thinking about that, we've developed uh, some different tricks to uh, get video uh, up into our, our realm, and uh, starting with uh, this video here. <laughs> produce that out of uh, various footage that we've shot around uh, the country and around the world and um, just with various teams of people. Um, um, I'm based in Los Angeles so it's a little bit easier to, uh, uh, to come up with talent uh, but I'll get to that in a minute. But we believe that no website or app or blog is really complete without something that literally takes us through the, uh, the motions of the message. But for most of us on the print side, um, producing a video is a new craft that we will have to master. So back at Act Two, uh, which was a few years ago now, um, I actually, this has nothing to do with video, I, I presented a new concept for our editors 
that uh, we introduced it where that frees our print editors and our art directors from the grind of the usual back and forth process of getting text to fit on the page uh, without the editors having to go back and cut it to fit and resizing the photos. So, but why uh, did we introduce that sort of template? Uh, it was because we knew our editors would need that investment of time to, inv to address digital media. But we had no idea at the time that that would mean that they'd also have to address making video, perhaps. So uh, to achieve that goal, we, we came up with a, a plan that would best serve their stories by having layouts that are already designed for them. And then the editor picks out uh, the best layout that we have hundreds of these various page solutions. And the editor selects the one that best addresses the story for that month. And I guess I should note that we have an editor in about 30 cities uh, around the world. Each city has their own editor. That's what we provide as a visitor uh, guide that hardly any other travel publication does, is that our editors live in the place that they're talking about. They don't just go there on assignment and file a story and then update it three years later in a, in a, a guidebook. Our, our editors live there 24-7. Uh, and uh, they produce it on a monthly basis. And then they produce it for the website on a daily basis. So now that we've helped our editors gain a slight time advantage with the print product, we still want to help them with their workflow for digital. And um, so th we value our editors so much. They are the destination experts. They live there. And, are and we are constantly thinking of ways to help them get the word out about their market faster in all media. We encourage a digital first mindset somewhat because our first love is print. But we have to address the fact that website and app, we need to update that daily, if not hourly. So you kind of have to think about that first. And it's a holistic process. Um, we have a new motto that we created of start your day with digital. So the uh, editor, while the caffeine is hot, could be thinking about ways they can address their, their audience. Because this audience has found their way to us in the digital medium, and they're looking for, for the information that our editors have. So we need to turn it around quickly. And I think it's best if you just have yourself a little schedule that in the morning you're going to address those, those options. And then, of course, any story that we're developing, we think of it as a, as a holistic process to make sure that it will play well in, in, in all media. So that's all going great now. Our editors research, and they write, they post regularly, and sometimes they even go home to sleep. But um, what about video? For the most part, our editors are not screenwriters. And they haven't worked on TV shows or news broadcasts. They are certainly not producers or directors. They, they know how to edit words, but they have never edited film. Yet these are our content experts. What they know about the city is what the travelers and the locals want to know, the cool details the unique hidden gems in the city, <clears throat> and yes, the famous things that a first-time visitor would not want to miss. They don't just talk about the touristy things to do. They hone in on the local, the new, but without neglecting the classic aspects. They keep their finger on the pulse of the city, but with one hand on the hip. So we want them to be, have smart content, and we want them to have smart video with and with opinion and uh, passion. Our mission at WARE is to inspire travel, not to bore travelers. So we feel that our local experts need all the assistance they can get. And let's say the, if we're doing a smart video in London, um, we, may, we should have our, our London editor do the, be the lead uh, screenwriter. All of our products master the respective medium in order to surprise and astonish with what we know about the place and the way we show it. But video is really difficult to produce, and it's very costly. Editing and um, post-production can take two weeks when we're accustomed to two days or two hours to file a story. So last year at Act 4, 
I was sitting here and um, right in that seat right where you are there and uh, there was one person, this year there's been a lot more videos shown, uh, but there was one person uh, on stage during a panel discussion and he was talking about video. Uh, he was a magazine uh, publisher though, uh, an editor and a writer and uh, a very accomplished background in print. So he was just the person I wanted to talk to. Um, uh, he has a TV show on PBS called Real Food, Real Kitchens. And I'm happy to say that he's back here uh, tonight to, uh, to help us um, discuss this, this um, continuing important subject of how to produce these. Um, during the Q&A, uh, during his panel last year, um, my question was if he could sit next to me at dinner. And uh, then I got uh, my boss, the uh, president of Morris Media Network, Donna Kessler, to join me also. And by the time our entrees had arrived, uh, she had green-lighted uh, an idea for Craig and I to develop a template for video, much like we had developed for print two years before that. So um, we started on it uh, right away. And here's, here's one of the first ones. And no stands here. Since Craig shoots food uh, and chefs, this is a, basically a recipe video for, um, with a, a key chef and uh, his or lamb. My name is Matthew Cargo. I'm the chef de cuisine at Prado in Winter Park, Florida. Today we're going to make you um, a lamb crispelle with an English pea pesto. So it's kind of a stuffed pasta, like um, more or less uh, like a cannelloni or a manicotti. This is our pasta right here. This is what we, the first is going to be kind of a spinach crema. It's basically blanched spinach, creme fraiche, um, and mozzarella. And you want to leave at least like an inch border. This is one layer, and then the braised lamb is the middle part. I'm gonna roll it over. You can take a regular towel, kitchen towel, server towel, doesn't matter. Just kind of moisten it up so it doesn't stick to the pasta. Hit the pasta a little bit with the water. So you're gonna use the towel as your guide. You wanna fold over and start forming it. Just kind of tuck in the ends right there. Come down here. And then kind of use your towel as kind of like a, kind of make like a, Old, like a torchon kind of deal. They basically just want to kind of tie it up, the butcher's twine. Make one first tie at the very bottom. Just a simple knot, come down, not too tight because you don't want to rip the pasta. And one last one right here. All you're doing is you're going up, under. Cut them right here. You want to blanch 10, 15 minutes. If there's a regular pot, water, make sure it's seasoned well. This is after you've poached it for about 15, 10 to 15 minutes so it firms up. And then what you want to do is you want to let it cool down naturally in your fridge or your walk-in. But you just want to kind of naturally let it cool down so everything sets. So just remove that carefully. You don't want to rip the pasta. And you kind of have your finished product right there. And as you can see, you have your, your layer on the outside of the spinach kind of crema and then you have that nice lamb in the middle. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sear it and get it all nice and crispy and then finish it in the wood burning oven. So here we have our crust belly right here. It's kind of a half inch cut. I like to season it just a teeny bit. Take a little bit of flour, just kind of lightly dredge them in it. We want a nice hot saute pan. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take it from here and we're gonna take it to the oven. And then from here, we're gonna roast it in the wood oven just to get all that flavor. Take it over here and finish it on the stove. A little bit of butter. Got a little bit of lamb stock right here. We're just gonna add that to it. Just kind of reduce it, glaze them out really nice. And then we'll just go ahead and take it to the plant. So what we've done is made an English pea pesto. I'm just gonna put that down kind of first. I'm just gonna plate one for you. Just kind of on top of that pea pesto. Garnish it with a little bit of fresh mint. And then we've got uh, pecorino sardo. We'll just kind of finish it, call it a day. So what we have here is a lamb crispelle, followed by mint pesto and a little bit of fresh pecorino toscano. Enjoy. The 
so uh, <laughs> to produce that, he got in touch with our editor and our publisher. They talked about what restaurant, what chef would be the most interesting to talk about uh, food in Orlando, and they put it together, uh, and and they did that. But we won't always have Craig out in the field. It might be another videographer and another film editor. So uh, so we developed this um, video production Bible, which is really what we were going for with this. Um, so based on two or three of these test videos, and this will be cut into different links, so YouTube it might be one minute. Um, if we put it on a, a TV show in an in-room in a hotel, it, we might take three of those, put it together, and it would be a 20-minute show. Um, but we needed a Bible um, to help people figure out uh, how to do these kind of things. And uh, it, the Bible is sort of a cross between how to build your own VW van instructional and an and editor's AP guidelines manual. And it's, um, it's, there's a lot of information in it. Uh, right down to what cameras we recommend, what microphones. The sound is very important. It's always the, the worst problem because you have to sync it with the video and then you have to sometimes separate it out when you're editing. So, um, so it's, it's a real uh, tricky thing. So we think this is a good start for our editors to learn how to address this, this new medium and um, we also think it's a great opportunity to reach a giant new audience with consistent branding and a consistent style of storytelling. So, but we also need to monetize it because video ain't cheap. And uh, so as, and, and Craig's constantly working on ways to make it less expensive and more practical. And I think you've come a fantastic way in a very short time since he did that one. But um, so we're now looking into the idea of product placement, subtle, not obnoxious, something like this. <laughs> So that magazine is uh, called Our Magazine. It's a Royal Hawaiian Center. It's a large shopping and entertainment complex in Honolulu. And we've been thinking a lot about how we could help them um, give themselves an identity, but how do we pay for it? So we do have advertisers in that magazine. It might be a way to value add by giving them video, but showing their products in a very artful way, much like we shoot their fashion photography anyway. So uh, we're, we're now looking at establishing a criteria where uh, if a photographer is shooting something for us on a custom job, we're probably going to ask him to do video as well. Not, not a lot, maybe just a few seconds even, but something that would come to life uh, in digital media. So phase two will be locating film production talent um, uh, like Craig's crew uh, locally and regionally in all of our markets and where is in 80 cities um, around the world. So it's quite a, quite a task. We have magazines in about um, 45 of those. So th those will be where we start. And then maybe we'll do what Morris does best and hub the um, post-production in one of our two publishing centers in Augusta, Georgia, and in my office in Los Angeles. So I bring this process to your attention as a testament to the benefits of the ACT conferences. Uh, Samir is this magical connecting point, a living connecting point uh, for those of us in the community of creative for live discussion regarding the challenges we face, innovations, and the solutions that we might come up with. 
So um, we had hoped to have Jeff uh, Cole, our editor here today, but he had to go back with Mr. Morris just now, so um, he's not here with us, but I'd like you to meet uh, Craig and have him explain a little bit about uh, some of the um, some of the process that we went through in, in taking um, the, the strengths of this publication into the strength of, of the video medium. So, uh, Craig. Thank you. My name's Craig. I uh, started a brand called Real Food, Real Kitchens. Uh, it was initially a, a television series idea. I had been working in New York City for 20 years in production uh, at MTV and VH1, Nickelodeon, Time, on feature films, you, you kind of name it. Um, I was also a magazine editor for a time at In Touch Weekly and at 17 for a little while. Um, so I went to Breakaway, start my own business, and start producing my own series. This was the first idea that came to mind, and luckily it was uh, or has been a success so far. Um, so I want to show you a trailer of kind of what Real Food Real Kitchens is all about. Um, if I can pull this up real quick. generation to generation. Welcome to Real Food, Real Kitchens, the show that goes into real kitchens of everyday people to tell the story of a dish and the families and cultures that bring it to life. So what I've done with the series since we uh, launched the television and digital part of it um, is like what most people have been talking about at the conference has been expanding the brand. Um, it has since become a magazine that we put out last year, um, but our publisher has since kind of disappeared. Uh, it was Source Interlink was our, our publisher for that. Um, it's also a daily updated website, um, and we also rely heavily on special events for, for income, one of which I'm rushing back to Florida <laughs> to do tomorrow night. Uh, we're we're featuring a, being featured at a film festival tomorrow. Um, and also, I've uh, expanded into two different series that are, are spinoffs of Real Food Real Kitchens. One is called Resorts and Vacations, where we go to food destination resorts to feature um, the chefs um, that kind of create the food and the vibe and the menu, and we talk to them about um, kind of their family influence and how they've brought that food into the menu at the resorts and restaurants where they work. 
Um, and then there's an international version, which we shot a pilot for in Cuba so far. is the first place we've gone. Um, and that's still being worked on. Um, all that, and I feel like there's still room for the brain to grow. So um, with the WEAR project that I worked on with Haynes, um, we set out and achieved a goal of producing quality video content on a budget um, and streamlining the process to sort of reduce the costs and have the turnaround go from a couple weeks to hopefully a day or two. Um, and we also created a formula that can cost um, very little, so it can then generate revenue. Um, and it also brings editorial content to life digitally through video, which was uh, one of the big goals as well. Um, and the project that I did with Ware and through the process of building Real Food Real Kitchens into a brand, um, I've learned that many digital distribution outlets like Hulu is uh, the one that Real Food Real Kitchens is on. There's Netflix and there's also a lot of smaller companies that are trying to do the same thing as those two giants, um, are very hungry for content. Uh, it's getting to the point to where they email and call me looking for content before I even have a chance to, to get out there and produce the content. Um, so um, with these digital distribution channels, um, it's become a really good source of revenue for me as a small producer. I kind of do everything for Real Food Real Kitchens, except for uh, the weeks we're in production, I'll hire freelancers on occasion. Um, so it's become a really good revenue system for us. Every quarter we get a check from our digital distributors, which is um, a great time of, of, of the month. Um, <laughs> So um, it's for like all of these reasons, I don't see why um, more magazines aren't creating quality video content for their websites. Um, there's also opportunities to take maybe a brand like Ware and, and turn it into a longer formed series like Real Food, Real Kitchens. Since these digital distributors are so hungry for lifestyle content, um, I feel like that possibility is absolutely there. Um, if we you know, produce a, uh, a really good show in a really good project and pitch it in the, the right way to them. Um, I'm finally, after three years of being immersed in Real Food Real Kitchens, stepping not away from it, but producing other lifestyle series, which is what I've wanted to do all along. Um, so on, my plan is to do the same sort of formula, start with a TV show, and then expand that brand into, we'll expand that TV show into a brand. Um, it's sort of a, a secret as, as, as far as what the content is about for that project right now. Um, I've also got other projects that are in development. I also own a website called lx-goods.com, which is a, um, a music and lifestyle website that's owned um, by Complex Media. That's part of their, their network of uh, websites, so we're producing some music content for them as well. And um, other than that, I'm just looking for a new publisher for Real Food, Real Kitchens magazine. Uh, we started shooting a second season recently, and uh, that's it. If you guys have questions or anything. Do we have any questions for Haynes or Greg? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> The restaurant? Yeah, um, yes, the camera person did um, and said it was amazing. Um, he also got to go back there for dinner that night, and I think they probably brought him a little of everything off the table. So. One of the fringe benefits. Yeah. I'm spending the entire day in the restaurant, in the hot kitchen. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Oh, yeah. With those restaurants that you use, are they going to you or you're going to them? Well, eventually what we hope we'll have is this will be a value-added portfolio item that our sales team can offer to a restaurant, unless it is a, um, an editor that is wanting to do a video story, in which case it has nothing to do with, uh, with the restaurant or with, the, uh, uh, with an advertiser. So we'll go, we'll, we'll go at it both ways, because we see the opportunity for a lot of, uh, of video uh, on our site, at the very least, and on our YouTube channel. We are developing a TV show called Where Traveler Television, which is going to be a travelogue, um, about a 30-minute show, hopefully on network. Um, but 
that it's a different hour and a different time in every market. You buy little space, um, 30 minute slots. So, um, but yeah, it's, it can either go originate with the editor, in which case they just come up with a cool story and go out and um, bring a film crew like, like Craig's production group, or um, it would be coming from the sales side and hopefully that side's gonna pay for the other side. We'll see. Is, is bandwidth a consideration well, it, I mean, there was uh, one of the presentations mentioned um, being, you know, in a gym down, down subterranean uh, gym and not being able to play your video. I, I think just even last year, there were hardly anybody using video in their presentation. Mm -hmm. It's becoming a lot easier. And now with Facebook, when you scroll through Facebook, the videos are just playing whether you press play or not. So I, I'm, I'm, I have a, a great sense of optimism for it, the bandwidth not being, it's, you know, it's it, more bandwidth is required and it often is better to have Wi-Fi, but, um, but not necessarily, you can play it, you know. So the answer is no. Well, not yet, it, it's, I mean, not right, right now it's, it might be an issue, but it's gonna take everybody a year to get this kind of content up anyway, and by then